So when I was putting this presentation together, I wanted to find the perfect sort of analogy to what it's like to be a link builder in a world where Google runs the show. And so I found this video, uh, and it's from Search for the Holy Grail, Monty Python. And this castle is like your site. And these are all the links that you've been building that you've been inviting into your website. And then there's Google. <laughs> and, and Google's always out there, and, but they're at, a, they're at a distance. And you know that some of the things you're doing are maybe the best way to, to build links to your site, but what's the big deal? Because they're just out there. They're never getting any closer. That's what it feels like. Until one day, Google comes in, kills all your links, kills your site, and there goes everything you've been doing. It's ridiculous. So we start off with the fact that if you don't build links the right way, Google will destroy everything you love. And that's just a fact. So before I really get into the, uh, the meat of this, I have a couple warnings about my presentation. And one is that it uses uh, post-meme images that's basically images from memes without the actual meme. And, and hopefully that'll make sense to you in a little bit. It also uses arbitrary uh, bullet points uh, designed to piss off Rand and kill kittens. Where's the sound? Uh, but I, I wanted to be sure that no kittens were killed. We just had to break its arm to get that sound. It's an actual distressed kitten. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. So anybody who has any experience building links knows that it's hard. And whether you're new to it or you've been doing it for a long time, uh, even like Patty, it's not an easy, easy thing to do. And relationships aren't easy either, as, as we all know. And, and, and so uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to try to bring those together and, and see how we can make those uh, work a lot better. I love the silence on that one. I thought that was so funny when I added that. Uh, so uh, what makes me a so-called expert in this area. I, I actually have a graduate degree in counseling psychology, and I even had my own private practice uh, doing relationship counseling for a while. So it's something I, kn I know a little bit about. Um, I stopped doing it because I didn't like listening to people's problems every day, but that's a personal thing. Oops. So what do, what do most people want from a relationship? And when I talk about relationships, I, I don't mean uh, really a couple. I mean, I really mean relationships that you're building with people uh, in order to network with them, in order to, in this case, uh, get them to mention you, get them to link to you, get them to talk about you socially. And the things that, that people want, they want to be heard. Uh, they want to be respected. They want to be noticed. They want attention. Uh, those are things that people uh, want in a relationship. And characteristics of a healthy relationship usually, usually involve uh, really just kind of one uh, basic rule, and that is to be treated the way you would want to be treated. And so as you enter into uh, networking in a way that I'm going to be describing today and, and building relationships, uh, the rules aren't that hard. It's treat people the way you want to be treated. People do not want, they don't want to be sold something. I'm sure that everybody here who has been in a networking situation, uh, you, you are repulsed when somebody is trying to sell you something. Uh, they don't want to feel like a pawn or an object, and they certainly don't want to talk about links. Ah, there is a kitten noise and everything. I think the sound was down. Oh, well. 
So, we have, so that leaves us with a paradox, which is how do you target somebody without actually targeting them? And uh, again, the answer is, is fairly simple. Unless you aren't a genuine person, uh, being genuine is really what it takes. And uh, I can say from personal experience that I wouldn't be here today, I wouldn't be doing what I was doing uh, unless I had done the things that I'm presenting to you today. All right, so that's enough. We'll keep moving and we'll get to more of the, the good stuff. So the first thing is you find your websites. I don't care how you find your websites, what technique you use. You can use Google, you can use Ontelo, you can use OSE, uh, however you find uh, sort of your targets, the, site that you, the sites that you think are relevant to what you're doing, uh, do that. And then who are the people behind those sites? Who are the, uh, who's the author, uh, who, who is the editor of that site, that type of thing. Find out who they are and follow the trails. The trails in this case are going to be Facebook. Uh, they're gonna be where they are basically on social networks, where they're blogging, uh, going to LinkedIn and finding out what they do. Uh, Googling them is really easy to do. I, I just used uh, Jennifer Lopez as an example here, uh, but basically, you know, for a lot of people, especially people who are in a position to write and therefore uh, give you a mention on their site in some way, are going to have a pretty good presence and, uh, and you're us you will usually be able to find them pretty quickly in Google. And then who are their followers? So as you find out where they are, it's actually really easy to kind of dive into uh, what their life is like online. And in the case of even uh, Google+, uh, in the case of, of Twitter and so on, all you have to do is look at who they're following and that gives you a whole lot of insight uh, very quickly. Uh, full Contact is a service I, I really like and recommend. You have to have a coder on board to use it because it's only uh, via an API, but once you have a piece of information about the person that you're, you're looking to build a relationship with, even just something like an email address, you can pass it on to Full Contact and they will bring back a ton of information, uh, just a ton of, where the, of information about where they are as far as on social networks and elsewhere. So I really like Full Contact. You can monitor them. You can pull in their RSS feed. You can uh, monitor uh, the person or the persons on a particular site and kind of see what they're saying, where they're talking, and, and be alerted to that quickly. So interacting with them, this is a really big one. This is, it's nothing new, but it's really important to stress this, which is when you go to a person's blog and you comment on their blog in a nice way, not as a troll, and you are uh, plus wanting uh, their content and you're liking their content and they're sharing their content and you're retweeting their content, people see that. And so uh, the point of developing this relationship with them is to be visible, is to show that you're interested in what they're doing and to even offer something to them. So make sure you interact. Uh, I find that I can't do this, uh, I can't build a lot of relationships, particularly from a sort of networking marketing way, without actually having the right tools. And so uh, what a lot of people will do is they'll use spreadsheets and they keep track of all the things they're doing. And then you can also use uh, a CRM. Uh, what, we, what I do is we use our own software. So I like to keep really good contact records uh, where I am in that relationship. I also like to keep really good link records which tie into those contact records so I can keep track of that. And one thing I wanted to show off because it's something special, uh, to me at least, is uh, the idea of doing recurring tasks. And so one of the things that we'll do with our CRM is we will uh, be able to set up a task, say that I want to interact with them on Twitter I want to do it at least every three days, uh, and then when I actually do that, as soon as I tweet them or mention them, it actually automatically uh, completes that task for me, and then it resets it for three days. The other thing that is really important, especially if you're working within a team environment, uh, a lot of link builders, is to make sure you keep really good notes. And so keep good notes about how you met them, uh, who actually is writing that note, who met them, 
uh, so that you guys don't run over each other or uh, it gets embarrassing when somebody else reaches out to them. So develop relationships naturally. You don't go out and find the editor of, of some particular media site and just find your chance when you can get in there and say, oh, hey, can we, can we do something? Uh, if that person likes you, if that person is even remotely interested in, in what you might have to offer, they'll let you know. Uh, everything that, that I'm suggesting here is more along the lines of what I call participation marketing or being present. It's not about the hard sell. It's about being there, being out there, participating. And, and so the, this particular approach is a long play approach. It's not something where you are aggressively trying to just, as soon as I can get in, I'm gonna try to close the deal. To overwhelm them. What that means is when that person finally uh, replies to you on Twitter or they say something, you're like, oh, I have their attention. Don't overwhelm them with 10 tweets you know, back to them. I've seen it, it's happened, it's happened to me. Uh, that is about the worst thing you can do. Stay on topic, not your topic. Sometimes it can be uh, really tempting to finally have that conversation uh, with, with that particular person uh, and, and to try to slip in that thing that you really uh, want from them. Um, that's, again, uh, is not going to work and uh, it's not gonna feel genuine to that other person. Create a positive experience. If you do things for others, if you're there for them, they will, a lot of times, not always, reciprocate at some point. Um, that is a, a hallmark of a good relationship. Be patient, or else. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> it's a loop. <laughs> so, the, uh, I don't know if I can get through this slide. I don't know if I can pause it. You, you do not want to do something too early. Be patient, it's a, it's a long play, and if you actually, uh, I can't even get through the slide, I'm just gonna skip through. <laughs> this is, that's just a waste of a slide, but I'm glad you liked it. So, um, so, so what's the outcome of this? Being present, participating online and in person with those people, building those relationships. Uh, the outcome is real friends. Oh, if, uh, uh, and it's also the ability to connect with your friends' friends. So you uh, are, are able to uh, find connections, find new relationships that uh, maybe you couldn't have before. And sometimes maybe even though you might be, say, targeting somebody who you really want to get to know, um, nothing will come from that, and that's fine. At least in this uh, particular approach, that's okay. Uh, because what will happen is you will get to know their friends and you will become part of their network and something great will come from that, and that's okay. So social exposure, you get that. And of course, the best, which is natural links. That's, that's what we're going for, is, is natural links. This is supposed to be the, yeah, extravaganza of natural links. So real quickly, I'm gonna go through just real life, recent, semi-recent uh, examples of links that, that we've gotten uh, just through relationships, real relationships that we've had. So here's one in National Business Journal, uh, unexpected, uh, just somebody that we've been friends with, gone out of our way to, to say hi. Um, same thing, a uh, friend, uh, Nikki Hicks, who I've known uh, kind of off and on for a while, just at conferences. Um, I, I, she uses our software, she, it stayed in her mind, and when she wrote something, we got a link from that. Uh, making yourself a resource, just letting it be known that you love to be able to help uh, on, on anything they might need as a quote, it's kind of a, a PR approach. Going above and beyond, so uh, a lot of you represent uh, services, and although a lot of your companies can't really control this, uh, going above and beyond, at least in support or, res or responding to somebody can get you uh, mentions and links. Uh, there was a, a guy from Speedy SEO that 
included us in an article uh, in .NET Magazine over in the UK, and uh, I'm, I'm still pretty much at a place where if anybody mentions us, particularly in a magazine, that gets me really excited. Uh, and so I sent this guy a gift basket, because I was just like, dude, thank you. Uh, and then he went and did this. I wasn't sending him a gift basket to get a link, um, but I ended up getting one uh, as a surprise, so there you go. Uh, being a good host, uh, Todd Mintz is somebody that I have gotten to know mainly online, uh, and then uh, just a few weeks ago, he came to visit Nashville, and, uh, and I was excited. I was like, yeah, I really want to hang out with, with Todd uh, and get to know him better, and so I showed him all around. If you look at the very bottom, it's like OMFG brunch, because I took him to the greatest southern breakfast brunch, um, and I'll take you guys too if you come to Nashville. Um, and so, so that can, can be something that comes out of nowhere. Uh, Dana Lukadu, who is here, uh, we uh, donated money to, to a cause that uh, she feels strongly about, wasn't expecting a link. And, 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 and Dana did this, you know, so it's awesome. I mean, thank you. Uh, this is a, another example of uh, a friend of mine who does PR in Nashville. She's starting her, her, a new company and she was worried about her website. And, and so I, you know, I don't have time to look at people's websites and evaluate them and stuff, but she's a friend of mine, so, so I looked at it. Um, and I was really happy I did, because she needed a lot of help with who she was using. And again, uh, a matter of like a week later, she was writing an article for somebody and just randomly included us, so uh, relationships. Collaborating with, with others, uh, being a leader in a certain area, uh, that will uh, get you links. Uh, Joe Hall uh, is a friend of mine, and we chat often. Uh, I use the term link pimp. pimp. He is kind of a link pimp, but uh, because when you build these relationships, then these friends, and it goes both ways, I'll get a DM every now and then from him and just be like, hey man, can you kind of you know, pimp my link? It's like, sure, because we're friends, and I, I know that everything he writes is really good. And so as you build those relationships, you then start building a network of people who can share things. And it's not just a network of people who can share things, uh, it's a network of people who have authority. And then uh, another one that is uh, a favorite of mine is that as you build these relationships and as you uh, become closer to these people in these networks, uh, then what can happen is you get invited to groups that don't exist. And, uh, and those are groups that um, people of influence that can help each other out, uh, both socially and other ways. Pay it forward. Pay it forward is important. It's especially important to me because many years ago when I had a little company, when I lived in Denver, a little hosting company, web development company, I had a, a buddy come to me and say, uh, you know, I don't have any money, I'm trying to do this thing. Um, it really, really helped me out if you could just, you know, give me free hosting, just, you know, whatever. And I didn't have to do that, uh, but the guy, he needed it, and he was my friend. And so I did that, and then a year later, he got a, a job at one of the top marketing firms in, in Denver, and I ended up my little firm getting cores and iOmega and eCollege and all these other clients because of that gesture that I did for him. So pay it forward is important. The biggest thing about this is that unlike a lot of the other approaches that you've already heard about and will hear about is that this is a long-term approach. Uh, th this is not uh, what's the next thing, you know, now I am going to do what Patty said about Amazon. I'm going to go there and I'm going to do something about those profile sites and, and check out what's going on there. That just fascinates me. Um, but, but this is a long-term play of, of, of creating real friendships, um, not just networking for the, for the sake of networking. Uh, and, and I can tell you today that I was able, I've done all these things. It's worked really well. And I was able to come to Seattle for my, fir for my first trip here, and I have uh, real friends from this experience. In fact, this entire presentation, a lot of things that I talked about have been things that Joanna Lord and I have talked about years ago um, as uh, sort of we were kind of moving up.
So it's, it's, it's long term, it's not short term, but it will really pay off. And to me, long term is completely consistent with how you want to uh, build authority in your site in regards to Google. So that's it, thanks. So you went from building relationships in real life to building relationships online, which yes. seems perfect, the perfect thing for you. Um, okay, let's do Q&A. We're going to do two questions because we're uh, running a little bit tighter. So we'll make them good. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, anyone have some questions? Raise your hand. There's so many of you out there. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> John, thanks so much. Uh, the question that I have is, this sounds like a time-intensive process, and also if you're making a lot of friends, because ultimately, truly, you want the business as well as the friendship. How much time are you putting into this effort, and what is your return on investment over a, over a certain span of time? Yeah, I, and I think, the other thing you're sort of touching on with that question is that there's something, there's something about this that isn't very practical for a lot of businesses. Um, and especially with, you know, when you say ROI, you're basically saying that I have to show uh, return on all this time. I have to show that this time was, was spent well. Uh, I would say that it's kind of almost like an evangelist role you know, for a product or, or a service. It's where the company itself has to uh, understand and realize the value of it because it's gonna be really hard to prove in, in a quantitative way. Uh, but to know that if you have somebody who's out there who is uh, present, who is representing that brand, representing that product, um, that is, because uh, part of this, at least if I make it more personal, part of this was trying to speak at you know, different conferences and trying to get in front of, of different people. Um, I, guess, I guess what I'm saying is, if you wanted to quantify, if, you, if I really wanted to bring it back down to a person or a team of people doing this, you would have to tie together the things you're doing online. And, and so the sharing you're doing, the finding out who you're targeting and then, and then seeing if they're actually sharing. Uh, and, and if they are sharing and you are getting referrals from their sites, from their accounts, are they converting? So that's pretty complicated, but, but that's the way I would actually approach it if I was gonna try to quantify it, is I would focus on the things that I can measure, and the things I can measure uh, are, like I said, from a CRM component, who am I targeting? Did I ever get that link? Was that link ever built from them, from that site? Uh, and then are they talking about me? Are those people talking about me? Am I, uh, if a company knows that you're, you know, you're the only person who's doing that, and once you started doing that, they started to see a rise in, um, in people talking about you online, you started to see a rise in site traffic, you started to see a rise in conversions, then that might be a way that you could show your impact. <laughs> oh, hey, so I, you know we're big fans of, of Raven, obviously, and I, I'm super curious, this is like personal, but also I hope valuable for the audience here. Can you tell us anything that you guys put in your tool set? Because I, I, don't, I don't constantly pay as much attention as I should to the, the specific elements. I'm really curious, like what in the last 12 months have you guys put into the tool set and seen very positive response? Like, like people are very excited about this, they're very passionate about it, you didn't expect it maybe, we, you know, we get this occasionally, and we're. I'm just always curious what other companies put in their software that gets well, people excited. Yeah, well, we're always constantly trying to improve everything. I, I would say the big thing for us, which is why I wanted to sort of like highlight it in here, because I thought it was related. Thank you. Uh, was it, it was the CRM? I mean, it is the CRM. So, so for us, it it used to be that it, it was all about um, hardcore as quickly as you can get the links type of link building. And so just having a way to keep track of that and having a way to monitor that was kind of all you needed. And, and so 
where we see everything going is uh, less and less of that is as effective, and, and it's really going towards uh, having the right relationships with people and sites and, and so on online. And so that's why, for us, we started going down, down that road, because it was like, this is really going to be all about who you know uh, and, or who you're trying to get to know. Uh, and, then, and then what we've done, the thing that people get excited about, which is all intentional, are data relationships. So for example, the CRM was designed for the person who's very PR oriented to stay in the CRM, but they could still do link building and they could still do social things. So for example, I can go into, like Lisa Myers, I think is the example I gave up there. She has a, she has a Twitter tab on there. If I click on the Twitter tab, then I don't have to leave the contact record. I'm in Lisa Myers' contact record. I click on Twitter and I can see everything. I have her whole timeline and I have full Twitter functionality inside that, that contact record. To me, that's pretty exciting and powerful. Um, but other people are, are not oriented that way. Instead, they're very link oriented. And so what we've done over with the link manager is we have a contact tab. Well, that contact tab brings, pulls in any contact you add or want to associate from the CRM. So, so everything's talking to each other. And that's the biggest, so that's the biggest thing we've done in the last 12 months is introduce the CRM and make everything talk to each other so that the, the people get to work in the space they feel most comfortable in but they kind of do the same thing. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to say that. <laughs> so. that, was, that was great. Thank you.